Hey, good morning, everybody. Chuck here, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. So today I've got a cool little project for you. An antenna I've been wanting to build for a long, long time. Uh, it's a difficult antenna, not impossible, but a little harder to build. It's called a cubicle quad. So let's check it out today. All right, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today and uh, spending your time with me. Uh, it really means a lot. This is a uh, antenna that I've been wanting to build for a long time. The cubicle quad has some of the highest gain of any directional antenna that you can build. And partly because it's instead of using two half or two quarter waves, like a Yagi does, it uses a full wave total. Uh, not the most robust of antennas, but uh, if, you can, if you can get them up and keep them up, I know you guys have probably heard guys, uh, the big uh, DX guys, and uh, a lot of times that's what they're using. They're a little harder to keep up than a Yagi and a little harder to build. I have to say, this build took a little more out of me than usual for uh, adjusting things. A little harder to adjust than a Yagi because you have the, the square, and every time you do it, you have to adjust everything. I've tried building one of these before. I think it was for 20 meters, maybe 10 meters. I don't remember exactly which. The hub is the hard part, and I have the ability to make a really heavy-duty hub, but I didn't want to spend the time at, the, at that time. Now, with, the, with me getting a uh, 3D printer, I decided, well, let me try to make something for two meters. And so I printed, I designed some parts, printed them out. I used, uh, basically what I'm going to use is a, you'll see the gray boom, which would be, which is a, um, electrical fence uh, post from uh, for doing electric fences for you know for cattle and stuff uh, from tractor supply and then the orange ones will be driveway markers that you can get at any hardware store ace has them home depot has them i'm sure low has them also so let me take you into the shack here and i'll show you all the parts that i designed what i designed them for and what i might do in the future to uh, maybe make it a little easier let's check it out Okay, so these are the parts. This this is something different. I'll show you in a second. But each element will have four of these, and they have a hole in the bottom here. Okay, and then they also have a hole right there. It goes all the way through. There you go. You can see the green. Did I get it right? Right there. So you take four of those. And then you have the one hub. Now this hole here is for a set screw, so I can tighten to the uh, boom. Okay, it goes through there, comes out. So you have four holes opposing each other. Now this this stuff here, this is the stuff that I told you about from uh, Tractor Supply. It goes in, and some of this stuff fits pretty tight. Like that fits nice and tight, and this is what I adjusted it to. Some of the ones I have outside are a little different size, and they don't fit quite as nice. I wish they all fit like this, but that's why I put the set screws. Okay. Now, this piece here that I told you guys about, it has a set screw also. And what you do is you put these in here, and then you can extend this boom if you want to. I'm not going to do that. Uh, Pretty sure I can get four elements on the standard boom, and these are these come in four foot links. Uh, you lose a little bit because of the end of it out there where they put the thing on, but I think it'll still be plenty long enough. All right, so that's what this was for. Now, this is going to be for the wire elements, and that's where these are going to go. When you guys cut these, you see how this it might. Can you see get that right there? Uh, if you tape them, uh, they cut a little bit better. They don't. They won't, won't want to fray like that. But these just go in here like this. It's, it's a pretty tight fit on some of them. Okay. And I'm using 22 gauge silicone wire, and then the wire fits perfect to go uh, right through here, like that. 
comes out the other side. And then those, it'll come like at a 90 to that. Kind of like that. You'll see, you'll see on the booms. And you've already seen it in the intro. So so that's about all there really is to it. I uh, It took me a few hours to uh, draw these up in um, Tinkercad. I know there's better things out there, but Tinkercad works for me. And this is all made out of ABS. Uh, it's not something I'm going to leave up all the time. It's more of a portable antenna to take out to the hills. So I'm not too worried about it. This would probably hold up for quite a while. But like I said, this is not going to be for... Uh, it's just for portable use for me. Let me show you a a calculator for the wire sizes. And uh, then I'll start showing you the build. Okay, so this is the uh, cubicle quad antenna calculator that I used. It's, uh, if you look up here, it's uh, pasty.com. I'll put a link down in the description um, so you can find this. And what I did here is I, I here, let me let me reset it. I, I put 146, 520 in here, and then hit calculate, and then it comes down and it gives you all your reflector size in inches, your driven element, your director, your director two, three, four, five, and then it comes down here and it tells you like the C is the distance from here to here, and it's pretty close, guys. Um, I, I basically what I did uh, was. I adjusted, I got the first one set and then I adjusted everything to that. All right, and then it says the spacing 14.97. I started there and I'll explain later how I got to my spacings, okay? And then it says 12.2, it's like 12 and 3 eighths of an inch or so, I think is what, uh, what this comes out to be. And then it just shows you a picture of what it should look like here. Now, I, I didn't do the diamond, mine is in the, uh, in the square side right now you'll see that it is set for horizontal so it's loaded at the bottom and it would it actually opens up pretty much all the repeaters that i can i can see from my house as far as the view uh you know clear clear point of sight there and uh, it, you lose a little bit and then i can set it to the side so say this was the half and that would be for fm and for that's your vertical and that's not hard to do I, that i have the set screw on the um i have to show you guys but i have a set screw on the uh the boom holder now now my boom holder and i'll show this to you later is is set up to go with my um my 12 volt rotor that i have the video for i'll leave a link down below for that also in the in the uh, description it's made uh for one inch pvc and I'll show that to you later. Um, and that's what the cup on the top of my rotor has on it. Okay. So like I said, here's here's all they, they go into um, putting side by side for uh, that stacking, horizontal stacking. And this one, I guess, was set up for horizontal. If you notice that it's, it's loaded at the bottom here, I think. Okay. So that would be horizontal. The sides are vertical. The bottom or the top, I think, would also would be for horizontal, but the bottom's a lot easier to do. All right, guys, there we go. All right, kind of hard to see. It, everything's really small. I tried to get a little background behind it that uh, was a little more ornate, guys. So the way I started this whole thing was I built this one, I built this one. This one here is the driven, and this is the reflector. I put both of them on somewhere around 15 inches. Oh, I moved the, the uh, director back and forth until I found... The best SWR I could find. Then I then I took this one, put it on. I, I, I and when I adjusted this one and this one, I basically made all the element uh, spreaders half an inch shorter than this one, and then this one's half an inch shorter than this one. Okay. So then I put this at the twelve and three H, which I think is where it ended up being. I don't remember exactly, but uh, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't film all this stuff. It's kind of hard to film and adjust at the same time. And then I did the same thing here. These these spacings are the same. So it came out really good. I'll show you a SWR curve in just a few minutes. And uh, it came out pretty good. It's at, uh, it's good from 144 to 148 and less than 2.0 at both those points. All right, let's do a sweep from 143.7 to 148 something.
Well, I'm good with that. I don't think I'm going to change anything. Let's turn the graph off. Let's go to 144. So we're 1.8, just below 144. 144, 1.8. 1.45, 1.4. 147, 1, 3, 146, 1, 3, 146, 5, 20, 1, 3, 146, 8, 1, 4, 147, 1, 4, and let's just do 1, 147.9, 1.5. So I'm happy with that. That'll cover everything I want to do. Now it's it's in the horizontal position right now. When you turn this thing sideways, uh, there's a huge difference of uh, on some of the FM repeaters because vertical is would be loaded here, and on some that I have a hard time getting to, it's actually three or four, maybe five S units difference. Uh, still readable, still usable, but uh, I, I don't really have to flip it for most of the repeaters that are within thirty or forty miles from me because it'll still bring them in and I can just leave it for for sideband okay oh and I did I did put a little bit of hot glue I'm probably going to go to a, a square um some, find something square that's about half an inch and I'll just change the hole in the middle so it's square to keep things from rotating it's it it they it, it rotate it, this is okay here but these uh they don't want to set as good as I would like them to but they work and the hot glue keeps them and I'm probably not gonna I'm not gonna move anything anyhow so there you go Hope this is uh, informative enough for you guys. Okay, guys, so this is the, uh, if you look right there, is the rotor mount that I made. This uh, is a one-inch coupling. The uh, mount fits into that perfectly. It has a set screw. If That's a little Allen wrench going through there right there. Not a set screw, but a, a bolt I can put through there. I just didn't get a bolt right yet. And then also my rotor has a one inch piece of pipe out of the top which is the same as the pipe down below and it works really good for a rotor for the rotor uh, assembly and uh, it also gets me past the metal post a little bit too just to make sure there's no interference from that so i hope you enjoyed the video today you know this is not an antenna build for everybody if this if you if you're thinking about building your first antenna I wouldn't suggest this antenna. It's a little more complex, a little harder to do an adjustment. Maybe do a dipole or maybe a car antenna, a cartina, in fed halfway, four nine to one. Uh, maybe do the dipole then the cartina, because that would that gets you kind of in the ideas of how to tune the antennas and all that. The tuning is the hard thing on this cubicle quad. Uh, you have to take every time you make an adjustment. You have to shorten the wire. You have to shorten the rods. Nice train. We got our trains right down the road here, and. Uh, it's a little more complex, but you might want to try something easier for your first build or two. All right, I want to thank the, uh, the my subscribers. Where I'm almost at 5,000 subs, and uh, if you're new here, think about subscribing. I do a lot of builds on antennas. I do reviews of radios, and also uh, like HTs and stuff like that. And also I review different antennas that I have purchased myself. So all the opinions are my own. So this is Chuck KK6 USY for Ham Radio Adventures, 73 all. Be safe and hope to catch you on the airwaves.